guys, I'm going to be colouring my hair with henna. So a good few months ago I dyed my hair with Lush's Caca Brun and Caca Noir mixed. I have the exact ratio and a whole video about it, so I'll link that at the end in case you're interested. So this lovely company called Vuno have approached me and asked me would I like to try their henna colouring and I was like, Yes, of course I want to. We kind of um and ah'd about the colour that I was going to go for and eventually settled on rose brown, which I think is going to be a really gorgeous colour. It's supposed to be like a reddish brown colour, which I think will hopefully be perfect for autumn or fall. I'm really excited, I actually can't wait. So as you can probably see, this is my hair now. A few months gone from having dyed it with the Brune and Noir, but I don't think it's that different to my natural hair colour. So I have paler bits at the front, they're normally blonder than they are now, and then I have sort of medium brown I would say, hair, and I have kind of blondish streaks through it just naturally. So quick hair story for me, I always had my hair natural until I was about 19 I think, and then I decided I want to go blonde. Now have you seen my hair? It is so thick, it's unbelievable, and it's quite dark, so to go blonde is not going to happen, but my mum has naturally really blonde hair, so I was like, kind of jealous so that did not go well at all I ended up with like really horrible ugh, roots that were just kind of like yellowy orangey coppery hideousness the rest of my hair was kind of a sort of yellow blonde which kind of turned to strawberry blonde and then I dyed over it with a dark brown dye and just let it grow out and then I cut out the dyed hair so I had natural hair then again until a few months ago whenever I dyed it with the Luscious Cacabrin and Noir, which I did like, but it was a bit of a faff, just with it being in a block, having to sort of, well I grated it the first time, and then the second time I did it, I actually did it twice, so the second time I did it I cut it up, which was easier, but still annoying. It was darker than my natural hair, but I think maybe I should have just gone for the Noir, if I was what really want my hair significantly darker because it did darken my hair but I think maybe I would have liked it darker but now I'm really excited to go for this kind of red shade so this company Vuno they are uh, originally a Czech company they're fairly well established in the Czech Republic but now they're moving into the UK and I'm so excited to, to get to try it it comes in a powder form hold on I have the box here so it looks like this. It's actually really nice packaging. I really, really like their packaging. So I quite like the name Vono and it means uh, this is it or like this is the one, the one you've been looking for kind of thing. I really like that. So it's an all natural henna hair color and they no animal ingredients. They're against animal testing. They're vegan friendly, 100% natural and organic. So really, really good for you. Henna is a natural herb, so it just colors your hair. And what it does basically is it coats the actual hair strand I think is the right word the hair strand so each strand is coated in henna rather than what normal dye does which is it penetrates the actual hair strand and dyes it this coats it and it makes it healthier and stronger and also gives you a lovely color they are bringing out I think they might have actually brought it out already shampoo and conditioner and a hair mask that are non-colouring as far as I'm aware. I'll leave all the links in the description below anyway. But yeah, I'm so excited to try this. So in the actual box here, you get you get a pair of plastic gloves. I'm gonna use my own just because I really like the gloves that I have and they fit me really well. So this is the henna, it's uh, in this pouch, I guess. And I think it's in powder form and then you add it to water. The water has to be a very specific temperature when you're mixing it to get the right shade. And then you have your instruction booklet cap like a shower cap that you're supposed to put over your hair once you've got it in and apparently it only takes 45 minutes so that you can leave it on for like two hours if you really want to but it should be quite quick and I like that I don't like having to sit with it on for a really long amount of time put some Vaseline or oil or something around your hairline so that you don't stain your skin keep the mixture nice and warm but not too hot um, obviously as I say you need the water to be a very specific temperature depending on what colour you're going for but the instruction leaflet tells you what temperature you need for your colour you've applied it for the correct length of time you just want to rinse it out with water until it remains quite clear and you just want to take all the residue out of your hair you're not supposed to use any styling products don't use any shampoo and the colour can develop up to 48 hours after colouring and yeah, so I think I'm probably ready to colour my hair. I'm so excited, I actually can't wait. So I'm gonna dump my hair. Uh, what I'm gonna do actually is get into the shower and wash my hair using shampoo to just get out any like products that I have on my hair. And then with it damp, but not like dripping like mad, I'm going to then apply the henna. And I'm gonna show you how I do that. 
So yeah, that should be good fun. So I've just boiled this water. I'm gonna test the temperature. I have a non-metal bowl. This is a Pyrex bowl. My sachet of henna. A silicone stirrer. A pair of scissors to cut open the henna packet. You just wanna add a little water at a time until it achieves a smooth yogurt-like consistency. And you don't wanna use anything metal because it can affect the way the dye turns out. And now I would say it's a fairly good yogurt consistency. Okay, so I'm just starting with some coconut oil. And I'm gonna rub that around the edge of my hairline so that I don't get any dye on my skin. Okay, now that that is out of the way, I'm going to dampen my hair because it's a lot easier to work with. And also, it, it's only active when it's damp, so it keeps it damp for longer. Like I said, they do provide you with gloves, but since I have my own gloves that I like to use for basically everything, um, I know that they work really, really well. I'm just going to use those. Well, they're quite thick, you see, and my nails don't puncture through quite as easily as most disposable gloves. <laughs> Which is really annoying when you're trying to do something like staining a fence and you discover that your gloves are in holes and your fingers are orange. It's not that I have kind of semi tiled around it a bit, so it's just damp, you can't really wring it out. And that's what I want for a minute. I'm just going to use one of these brushes, the kind of typical hair dye brushes, and work away. So, yep, just going to paste it on here. Make sure I have it all really well coated before I move on to the next layer. I have now done the whole top of my head and I'm going to do the back of my head. Now I'm just working it through the lengths of my hair. Wash it off. So this is what my hair looks like now that I have coloured it with the henna. As you can probably tell, it's quite significantly more red toned than it was before, and it's also quite a bit darker. I'm so excited and I think it looks really autumnal and I decided to film the ending in a uh, forest because, you know, I just thought it was really pretty and yeah, that's basically my reason. I had a really good experience with the Vono Henna. There's definitely things I would do differently. Firstly, I would not do it in a bathroom. It was not well enough ventilated. I would do it outside or either have like an extractor fan on maybe. So that's a tip for you. Also, I did kind of get it everywhere and I think it would have been much better to do it outside where the mess wasn't going to be such a big problem. The only reason that I did it indoors this time, because I previously did it outside, was because there was a hurricane. Hurricane Ophelia was going through Ireland, so <laughs> yeah, I couldn't really die it outside and I was quite eager to do it, so I decided to do it inside. Outside is preferable, but if not in a more ventilated area, probably covering 
the area around you with something would be a good idea because as I say it is like quite messy and it can sort of just get everywhere. Yeah I think keeping the henna a little hotter might have been a good idea because I think it might have been a wee bit more red toned if I'd kept the henna a bit hotter. The only thermometer I had was like a laser one and I'm not too sure how accurate that is but I'm still really happy with it. I think it looks really nice. It's quite different. I actually have had several people compliment me on it which I was like oh thank you thank you. I'm really really happy with it and um, I'd like to know actually have any of you guys dyed your hair um, with henna because if you have let me know in the comments below what was your experience like. Do you have any tips for any of us uh, newbies at <laughs> dyeing our hair with henna because I've only dyed my hair three times with henna now and I definitely have things I would change but let me know if you've done it what your thoughts are and if you have any tips and let me know if you haven't done it would you consider doing it and if so what shade would you go for i think that's it so if you like this video please give it a big like give it a thumbs up and subscribe hit that little bell icon to be notified whenever i make a new video and i shall see you very very soon bye guys